we were on the edge of the Amazon Basin, you know, the, the greatest rainforest on Earth, the, the most biodiverse environment on Earth. We were exploring the boundary of French Guiana, between French Guiana and Brazil. This was the start of a great adventure in, into, into basically an unknown. Uh, and I love going up Amazonian rivers anyway, it's always exciting. You, you, you come around a corner and you see birds flying, animals. In the early morning you smell the scent of trees by the river hanging low over the, the, in the mist. And uh, it, it's a really wonderful experience. This is an area that has been very poorly explored, almost unexplored botanically, almost unexplored in any way actually. And so it was a great opportunity to find out what's there. I was one of two botanists invited to join an expedition with the French Foreign Legion. We went with the French Legionnaires because they, they saw it as a great opportunity to explore their southern boundary. Um, they also saw it as an opportunity to, to test themselves in, uh, in long expeditions in the forest. And as you get deeper and deeper into the, in, into the forest and the river gets narrower and narrower, it, um, you really feel that you're immersed in, in the Amazon vegetation and then it's time to, to walk uh, and that, that's actually when it became you know, much harder work. The vegetation we were going through ranged from tall forest on the ridges to palm swamps, tangles of bamboo, areas covered in spiny palms. I was coming across species I knew from elsewhere in the Amazon, but others that were completely new to me, very exciting. And it's really quite likely that some of them will prove to be new to science when they've been analyzed. It was actually very tough walking through, partly because we were very heavily laden. We were carrying a lot of food, we were carrying, I was carrying botanical equipment, and of course all our camping equipment. All the time I was walking, I was looking at the plants and making observations on the vegetation. It's quite difficult because of the speed we were going. We really barely stopped at all. And then I collect plants when I can. And really that's just a case of grabbing a plant when I see something that's fertile with flowers or fruits, putting it in a bag. And I end up with something like this by lunchtime. <clears throat> really all I'm doing now is putting them into newspaper so they don't get any more bashed up. I'm literally just going to take the specimens, put them in between a sheet of newspaper and um, deal with them later. Unlike everybody else whose bag gets lighter and lighter every day as we eat the food, mine doesn't seem to because I, I, I eat the food as much as I can and I keep accumulating more plants. So my bag is something like, it's over 30 kilos, it's, um, it's quite hard work. And uh, I have to say, this is the toughest expedition I've ever been on, physically. Normally you measure all the trees and you collect specimens, but what I was doing was taking DNA samples from the bark of the trees instead of climbing them and collecting specimens. There just wasn't time to do it you can now get a great deal of information from just a small piece of plant material. A lot of these plants have ke defensive chemicals. It's partly because this is such a diverse environment. There are a lot of insects, there are a lot of fungi attacking everything. And, and these, chemical, these have chemicals in them which are, are designed to either be poisonous or to have some kind of biological activity that prevents fungi from attacking it or stops animals from eating it. And people have learned to harness these chemicals for medicinal properties. So at, at night we, we all set up our own little bashes, as they're called, or basically a hammock with a tarpaulin over it. And we were all scattered over an area, so there was no great big camp. We'd, we'd arrive somewhere, we'd all find a spot, tie our hammocks up between the trees, chop, up, chop down the vegetation that's in the way, and uh, cook our... Uh, supper over a little gas stove or paraffin stove and, um, and sleep. The 
I'm lying in my hammock, resting my feet, which are falling apart. This problem with my feet is actually quite serious. It's, um, it's a combination of abrasion, fungal infection, and I'm not sure what else. Uh, it basically means most of the skin's coming off around the toes and under the toes and around the edges of my feet. Incredibly painful to walk. And I hope that it might get better in the next day or two, but um, really that, that's, uh, that's more likely if we rest and if we can't rest because we have to keep moving. In fact, if we don't keep moving, we won't have any food. There's a drop of food uh, probably two days march ahead of us and uh, we will have run out in two days, so, so we have to keep moving, going. <laughs> <laughs> the helicopters brought supplies in. We, we carry six days of food at a time. And then when we were in, in deep forest, we'd have to open a clearing and the um, helicopter would come in, drop the food, either land or, or do it just on a, on a cable. It's been a fantastic experience, but also because it's been a good opportunity for making collections and observations in a completely unknown area. I mean, it's, it's exciting. It's, I don't know what we'll find. That will take some time going back to the laboratory, studying the specimens, the data. I was very sad to leave. You know, it was a great, a great uh, bunch of men. It was a very exciting and uh, interesting endeavour. It was remarkable to be suddenly lifted out of the forest that you've been walking through for weeks and taken away at great speed and suddenly you know you're looking at it from above instead of looking at it from below. You know you realise actually that you, know, you maybe haven't come quite as far as you thought you had. You look down on the forest, this huge sea of green, and you realise you really are looking at the lungs of the world. It's impossible to overestimate how important this is for all of us, for regulating our climate, capturing carbon from the atmosphere, and of course, as a treasure house of the world's biodiversity. We expect at the end of this to, to know much more about what's in this area, to have filled in an important piece in the wider jigsaw of of understanding the botany of the greatest rainforest on Earth. Mm -hmm.